every day morning. That's how it is. Okay, I'll hand over the mic to our organizers. Thank you. Once again, wholeheartedly we welcome you all for the technical session. About Shodaka, Shodaka Life Sciences is workshop partner for today, the scale is striding via Nijinga Park College. Shodaka Life Sciences began with a vision to effectively address such imperfections in data mining and analysis. The company has been providing high quality data analysis services to other scientists since 2009. Shodaka has completed multiple service projects in the area of NGS and microarray data analysis. We now wholeheartedly welcome Ms. Travanti Dawal Uri Ma'am, a researcher with more than 10 years of research. Ma'am has recently completed her doctoral work at BIT Bellow. Ma'am has successfully led and completed more than 25 research projects at Shodaka. We welcome you, Ma'am. Now, I welcome Ms. Shravanti Dhuvalwani ma'am to take on the hands-on session by Shodaka team on the topic using public omics data sets for biomarker discovery. Thank you, Ma'am. Good afternoon all. Good afternoon, ma'am. So I'm glad that you're all back first. And I thank all the organizers for giving me this opportunity. And I would like to call Sir for you to speak a few minutes. So, uh, just to introduce uh, the topic itself. So, uh, and of course, uh, they have introduced uh, Ms. Shravanti also. Shravanti Tavaluvi is that right now. So she has been uh, with me for more than uh, how many years now? 11 years? 12 years. 12 years. Yes. 12 years. So 12 years she has been with me. And uh, she in her capacities, so she, she was employed first in Shodaka. She in her capacities, I asked, insisted that she, do, she does PhD. And of course, she's a very uh, enthusiastic and enterprising researcher. So I'm glad she's here to talk to you. So she will tell you certain things. But what I wanted to do is link the previous talk with her topic, what is happening here. So I told you, we have done transcriptomics study, meaning we take, took the RNA, we performed in next generation sequencing experiments to establish what are the list of RNA molecules which are expressed differently in the disease condition. I told you we have taken 8 NOA samples and 15 normal samples, compare the expression profile of all the genes under normal condition, 15 and 8 disease condition. The, what is the average of the average quantity of each gene mRNA in the eight NOA samples versus the mean of the same genes mRNA in the normal condition? That's what we will compare, right? That's how we will know the, whether there is a differential expression or not. So this is what we did with our own samples, our own experiments with RNA extraction, reverse transcription, cDNA preparation, sequencing, and analyzing the data. But in the end, I also told you, or maybe in the middle, of the beginning only I have told you, there is a lot of public data available. Everybody who does experiment like this puts them in the public domain. For example, our own data is also available in the public now. So there are a lot of cases where you can perform your own research, and it is very important. So we are talking about internship and all that. We will invite everybody who is interested in doing internship with us. You can also do that. But you can also do it at your own place where it, so today everything is available online. You can do it online in using internet facilities. So you can do your own analysis, okay? Let's remember that. How to do that if you want to is what Ms. Shravanti will demonstrate to you. So there is, the, what are the public databases? There are two main databases. How to use them, how to get the data if you are interested, and then download it and analyze. Downloading and analyzing, you will only do later. Right now, don't try that because if you try to download these data sets, they are huge, it will crash your computer. <laughs> okay? Don't try to download without uh, knowledge. But you can do it. If you want later, there are, there are other opportunities. For example, even if you don't have a high end computer, you can use cloud and you can do that analysis. But right now, understand where is the data set? How do I find the data set of my interest? Okay? 
This you can uh, learn today with the help of Shramati. I will give you one example, and it will take one minute only to tell one example of a study we have done. You might think, if people have already done the experiment, they have done the analysis also, then they have put it up, what will I do with it now? That's a normal question, right? I will give you an example, how we discover something new using public data sets. Lung cancer data sets were there. There were a lot of data sets out there. Many, many, many people have done experiments like this. We have done with non obstructive phobia. People have done, collected the samples from lung cancer patients, normal lung tissue samples, come to extract the data, did the analysis, and all this experiment they did. They published the data also, report also, but the raw data, the sequencing data, they have put it up there. Raw NGS data, raw next generation sequencing data, they have put it up, like we have put. We took all of them and we went into something different, meaning we segregated the samples from male patients and female patients. And we asked a question, are the genes expressed differently in lung cancer patients? Are they same in men versus women? Nobody had asked this question, so we did that. And in fact, Shalanti was involved in that work. She and uh, our group found that yes, there are genes which are expressed differently in men versus women. Meaning the way we respond to that disease depends on our gender. And what genes are expressed differently, we discovered that. And then what functions are associated with those genes we analyzed and we made a report of our own. That's the discovery by itself. So like this, you can find, make your own discoveries, discoveries of many types, many types, depending on how much you know about biology, how much make you, you make use of your routine classes and think, and how much you read. This is on top of it where you learn to use the public resources like databases and software, one part of it. So as I told, more advanced training we are doing on uh, from 12th hours, 11th is for jobs and career and higher studies, 12th hours we are doing actual advanced training on similar aspects. So I will now uh, hand it back to Shravanti. I will take your leave. I may, I may have to leave now. So, but uh, I had a wonderful time. Thank you very much. I have talked to some of you just in a joking way. Don't take it personally. I just wanted to motivate you. Nothing else. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can we replace NOA with lung cancer and find 
what are the genes which are differentially expressed between uh, lung cancer tissue compared to a normal lung? Yes. 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 Is it possible? Yes. 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 From everyone? Yes. 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 Okay. Now, my second question is, we have done so many experiments, right? And there will be a lot of ethical issues, and sometimes we don't get the samples. Finally, we did the experiments and came to a stage where we could identify certain biomarkers or some targets to you know, design a drug, right? So, is it possible, this is my second question, is it possible without doing the experiments, can we do that? Can we get to a stage where we can identify those important molecules which are playing different roles in case of disease compared to normal? No? How many say yes? Raise your hands. And some abnormalities will be visible in the cells. Uh, some abnormality will be visible in the cells. Okay, so? So it's dif uh, we can differentiate that there is some sort of gene working differently. Okay. There are genes which are different, right? We all agree to that. But the question is, can we identify those genes without performing experiments? Now you are given a task, you are given a project, let's say. Okay, you are supposed to identify these genes. Can we do that? No. Without doing the experiments? No. So all together it's a no? Yes. Anybody want to raise hand for S? It's me. Okay? So I say it is possible. And how? Linking to what we are seeing on the slide, can someone guess, yes, it is possible, maybe doing this. Yeah? Any thoughts? Biomarker? Yeah, even biomarker discovery, before that we need to get to a stage where we know those molecules. Uh, NGS, there is NGS on the slide, I know. <laughs> right? So anyone would volunteer to answer that? So I say it is possible. My third question is, okay, where to keep that aside? Mm, how many of you are ready to do that right now? Wow, very good. So we are ready to go with this hands on. We try to identify something like that, okay? So each of you can take your own case studies after this session, okay? And try identifying what are those genes which are different, okay? Are you with me? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, so. Uh, we take up the same lung cancer. So now, our, together, everyone have one task. Okay? Finding out what? <coughs> biomarker. Or, if it's a, uh, what is the difference first of all? Biomarker and a drug. Composition. Biomarker first to identify what is the difference. Okay? And which serves as a better biomarker. We have some molecules like that. To target a drug, there could be different molecules which might be suitable. So right now we are not entering to that part. But what is the questions we are going to ask to achieve this goal today, okay? So for which disease? So the lot of diseases, right? Okay, let's choose one, which is like, we still don't have a clear cut solution, which is cancer. Okay, now when I say cancer, cancer occurs in many tissues, right? So which tissue, for example, we'll take lung cancer, okay? So now we have one question. What is the disease we are going to look at? In the lung cancer, we are trying to identify certain biomolecules, which could be potential targets or biomarkers, right? Now we have the answer for that. What is the drug target? Or here we can put it in this instance, what is the biomarker? So to achieve, to get those molecules, what can I do? I can find or focus on those genes which are behaving differently in cancer versus normal, right? Like in the morning case study we have seen NOA versus normal tests, right? Now here we are looking at the patients who is uh, with lung cancer and the normal lung. 
Now let's imagine this is a lung cancer. Okay, the lung with the tumor. Okay, and we have the normal. So when we want to get these molecules, we need to focus at a molecular level, right? What do I mean by molecular level? At a genetic level. Morning, we have seen examples of uh, at a genetic level. You can you go? I mean, the things can go wrong at a DNA level or at a RNA level, right? Or even at a protein level. So we want to focus on each of them and identify which are those molecules where it's gone wrong, right? Now let's see. To do that, we have one question, which is without experiments, we want to do that. Okay, but now a little bit different. I'm telling here. So to do that, what we need to do initially, we need to do some experiments. Okay, to get the information of which are those molecules that behave differently. So I'm going to put you some examples before moving on to the real hands-on. I want to know what is the data that we are talking about. Okay. So here, microarray. Have you heard about that? What is microarray? Microarray is a technique. Let's not get into too much details. Okay, it's a technique. Okay, experiment like RT-PCR. But the only difference is instead of focusing on few genes, less than ten genes maybe, we are focusing here on all the genes for that species. So at one go, in one experiment, I can get what are all the genes which are going wrong. Now I can do that for lung cancer sample. I can also do that for the normal lung. Right? So these are examples of uh, some of the hydrophobic techniques. But here what I put is at the genetic level, at the DNA level, if I want to look at, I have uh, DNA sequencing. So NGS you have heard about? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Not in the morning session, but before that? It's a sequencing technology, but the difference, main difference uh, with the traditional sequencing like Sango, Sango sequencing, you know, yes. right? So what is the difference is, we are generating a lot of sequences in one experiment, and less time. So Sango sequencing, suppose it takes, uh, you know the Human Genome Project, right? It took around how many years? 13 years using the same technique. But now we can get, so which variant of the virus is there? We are doing the sequencing, okay? And uh, we can know by evening the results, okay? To have a complete genome, even the human genome, you can have the results by evening if you give the sample in the morning. <coughs> so that is the difference we are making with the NGS technology, okay? So DNA seq is a part of NGS technology. So I am not getting into each of these experiments, but just to give an overview of the today's hands-on. We are talking about NGS data, how do we obtain that? Similarly, the microarray data, okay? So these are, so just remember that these are the techniques, experimental techniques, which are performed at a high throughput level. High throughput means a lot of information, a lot of data, okay? So for example, if your project report is how much size of a computer size? Anyone? What is the size? You are all working on writing the reports, right? Or no? Not yet? Okay, let's imagine it is in, uh, uh, you all know the computer size, bytes, yes, in KBs, MBs, right? Yes. So NGS data, when we do, for one sample, we are going to generate 3 GB, 5 GB of data. Just one sample. And we need a system of RAM to run just the human genome. Minimum of 16 GB. And we in the servers work on 256 GB RAM. Okay? So that high end systems we need to process such high end data. Okay? So, but what we are going to see next will be very interesting. So, I am not getting into the experimental details. Now, all of you got the idea? There is a high throughput data out there. Okay? Are you all with me? Yes. I'll just show you what is meant by I to put some examples of that. Okay. So can anyone understand this picture? Or maybe just you know guess.
Yeah? No? So this is one example of a graphical display of a high throughput data. When you do experiments, morning we have seen some slides. You have seen the bar graphs, right? There is one in NOA, small, I mean the lower, and in disease case it is higher. Or normally, or, or vice versa, like you have in the normal higher, and the disease case it is lower. So instead of that, the same information we are trying to show for all the genes. That's the only difference. That's why we call this high throughput data. Okay? So these are some of the plots. Right? So here, each plot belongs to, each bar represents one sample, all the genes. Okay? We are trying to compare. Right? And what is this? Any guess? Heat map. It's called as a heat map. Why? Why is it called as a heat map? So it's trying to show you the variations in the color, okay, representing the darker color, higher level expression, the lower variety color, like the green or yellow, is a low level expression. So what we see for these genes, center, So, I can see here this gene called CREM, okay? How much it is expressed in this sample at a particular treatment? Here, we are talking about zero R treatment, but it can be any sample, okay? So, now I do a lot of these experiments and I get a high throughput data. High throughput means again, I am targeting how many genes? All the genes. We are talking about the or human genome. How many genes? 20. All genes, but how many? Number? 20 to 25,000. Ah, that is all taken. Okay, we are almost close to 30,000 genes. Okay, including, but very close answer, that's right. Okay? And we have predicted ones even more. But around 30,000 genes information we are getting in just one experiment. Okay? So that's the important information regarding hydrogen data. Now to the question, back to the question. Can we do it without experiments? And the answer is yes. How we do? We'll access the data that is already out there. Okay? So for example, if I say, what is the difference? In, for cancer, we don't have a clear-cut drug yet, right? So most of the time, the problem is with the stage of the cancer. It is detected at the later stages. So we don't have a proper diagnosis where we can say we can catch it. You know, in the early stages, so we, uh, we have a better treatment, or we don't even have a best treatment for the cancer. Okay, so that's the leading cause of death, right? So in that case, if you have something research done on that, okay, there's a lot of data already generated. Okay, so when we do the experiments, what we do, we just publish the article say that this is what we found from our experiments. We did so and so experiments, uh, like for example, NOA. We found these markers, but they are, we are also studying all the other genes by performing sequencing. Someone else can do OA versus NOA using the same data. So when we say we are targeting all genes, this is what we have already there. And you can reuse it, the same data, with a different objective and find out the answers. Is that clear? Yes? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma so if I don't hear, I'll ask you the questions again. Okay? Now with that, we'll move on to the hands-on. Okay? So first we will see a resource. So who wants to go with the uh, NGS first? Next generation sequencing technology or microarray? Which one may be handle first? NGS. Oh, everyone wants the new technology. <laughs> microarray is over, right? But it, that is still there. Okay. So NCBA, have you heard about? Yes, 
So now the question should be clear in our mind, right? So we are going to use the data that is out there and perform different analysis and identify what could be those molecules which are different in two different conditions, whether it's a disease and normal or it is across the tissues, liver versus lung, okay, anything. You can do anything, but we want to identify those molecules which are different. So now here SRA is one such resource which will provide this information. So when we do our experiment, we plan the experiment, we deposit the data, okay? Uh, most of the journals nowadays, you have to publish right once you do a research. So if you want to publish, you have to deposit the raw data. Raw data meaning, what is raw data? Data that is generated from the experiment, right? So without any processing, raw data means. That's why we are calling it raw. We have raw rice, steamed rice, something like that, right? So that raw data can be used, the same raw data, for a different purpose. Because what is sequencing doing? How do we get the sequences? We first, what is the first step? Uh, we get the tissue that we are interested in, it's a cancer or normal. Then what we do? We isolate the molecule that we want to sequence. Is it DNA or RNA? What do you want to sequence? Based on that, we get the molecule, biomolecule, and then we give it for sequencing. And once it is done, what we we'll get? What do you think we get? Sequence. Sequences means all 3.3 billion base pairs. Oh, I forgot to ask this question, but anyway, I got 3.3 billion base pair genome, right? Human genome. Are we going to get that in one sequence? Why not? We don't have that good technology right now, and you people can do that in future. Okay? So what we are doing is we are going to break these. First of all, we you know uh, break the DNA into pieces. So this 3.3 billion base pairs, you think only one copy will be there? In each cell, how many copies will be there? Okay, let's say, forget about cell and not get complicated. You have taken a tissue. So are you going to get one copy of DNA? How many? Many. Okay. So many copies of the same DNA you are going to get. Now you broke that into pieces. Right? So you got 3.3 is now into different pieces. We call them as fragments. Okay? In the technology term, uh, terminology, we call them as fragments. Now these small, small pieces are sequenced. Okay? So in the first sequence, ATGC, ATGC is there, for example. You sequence them, you're supposed to get ATGC, ATGC. But what we do again here, one sequence is not enough to say that it is ATGC, ATGC. What is something wrong with the technology itself? Right? So what we do, we make multiple copies of whatever is there. Okay? So which means one copy becomes now 100 copies. Already 100 copies are there, we broke them, they are broken in different places. We don't know where we are breaking them, okay? Now you can imagine, 3.3 billion base pairs cut into pieces. Now we generate again multiple copies of it. So how many sequences are we imagining? Millions of sequences, okay? Millions of short length sequences, okay? It could be 50, it could be 150, 300, 350, so on. So this is what is raw data. Raw data means these million copies of sequences. But we name them as reads. Okay? So raw reads is what we get from the technology. Are you with me? Yes. So when I say uh, reads, see, you can see in the SRA it's a read archive. That's why they're calling sequence read archive. Read means that, not read, book. Okay? Now somebody says read. In uh, science means you should say, oh, it's a sequence, okay? So SRA is a resource which holds that data. What data? <coughs> NGS data, okay? So it could be generated from DNA, RNA, any kind of library preparation, okay? So now uh, we have one example of uh, objective, which is lung cancer. What I said is we can use the existing data to do the same analysis. Now back to the sequencing, 
We generated the sequences, they're already there. Now, a researcher one wants to identify those genes which are differentially expressed between cancer and normal. Now, he has generated the data already. Whatever is expressed is there if it is RNA, okay? So, all the RNA molecules which are expressed in that tissue, we isolated, sequenced, right? And he had already studied that objective. Now, the researcher too wants to see, I want to find an answer, what is the difference between stage 1 and stage 2? Stage 2 and stage 3? Or stage 1 to stage 4? Across the stages of the cancer, is there a difference? How will it help? If I find something in stage 1, that could be a butter biomarker. Right? Yes, you all agree? Yes. So to do that, is the same data useful or not? Yes. But with a with a caution. What is that? Is the information about each sample available at stage level? Right? If you have an answer for that, yes, we can get the answer for this. Yes? So if I have 10 samples, and all the 10 samples, 5 are cancer and 5 are normal lung. Okay? Now within this 5, I have 3 from stage 1 and three from uh, 2 from stage 2. Can I do a differential analysis between stage 1 and 2? Yes. So the same data, because it is expressed in those samples. Okay? We are reusing the same data to find answer to a different objective. So that's what we can use the publicly available resources and find out these answers. But to do that, you need to know different aspects. How do we even, first of all, get the data? Okay? So I will show you some examples. Now, have you used any resource, databases? No? Okay. So databases means what, first of all? They store the info, right? And somebody who to access the database, they should be knowing what should I do to get what I want, right? In the database, everything is there. Suppose, for example, this database, we want a lung cancer data set, right? But in this, breast cancer is there, liver cancer is there, uh, coronavirus disease uh, related data is there, everything is there. If I just query all the samples, you get millions of hits, okay? But how do you come to a stage where I choose what I want? Okay, that I'll show you some examples. So for that, we need to do what? A search. Normally you search for different things. Okay, where is this college? You can go to Google or Google Maps and search, right? So the reason behind it is you will get the information. Similarly, we are searching this resource. And what is our objective? To get the lung cancer. RNA data set. We want to see what is differentially expressed. So not the DNA data. Okay? So like how you usually query with some keywords. I'm taking simple ones, lung cancer, and giving a search. Hopefully my internet works. Okay, so see number of hits. How many hits I get? Anyone? How many data sets are there? Can anyone answer? 97,298. 97,298. Everyone like this? Yes. So this many data sets are available for lung cancer. But is everything related to us? Yes? No, no. No. Why not? It's given. Why not we search for lung cancer and we got the results, right? So here if you see, when you focus on the right side. So the research is done on modern organisms, okay, and the human tissues also. But what data you want? We want data from humans. So what we do? We select the organisms. How many are there for humans? 71,581. So, 97, we have 71,000 organisms. So, once I click that, first of all, I will get those uh, 71,000. Now, this is what you want, you have now. Is that relevant? Yes? Can you download data for all these 71? No. Why not? 
not specific. There is something which is public, but something that is not public. Okay. So whatever is under public, only you can download the data. Okay. So in that, so I have only sixty-one thousand which are downloadable. So you can only use these sixty-one. But within that, we want something related to R and D. So what should I do here? I should choose the source R and D so that I get only forty-five thousand hits. Okay. Now. Within that, if you are interested in a specific platform, you can go keep on going like this. So I'm not getting into details of each of them, but the point is, you should know where I should filter to get an appropriate dataset. Okay? So this NGS reads each one is one dataset. Can you tell me what is the size of first dataset? What is the platform? Use so NGS technology is implemented by different platforms, different machines. Okay, in simple language, they are sequencing machines. Okay, so many uh, commercial companies work. Okay, and they establish these platforms. Okay, like for example, Illumina is one company. Okay, which has the sequencing equipment, and that's the. Uh, That's the one which is what do we say? This is the sequencing platform. Okay. So, what is the downloadable size of this data? It is simple, right? I can see download. Okay. So, this one data set itself is 16 GB, and this is a compressed file. And once you extract, 16 into three times. Okay, so that is the data size of one sample we are talking about. Our normal laptops we can't download and we can't process it. Okay, small data set during the training and all, it's okay to do it, right? So of course for now today we are not going to process them, but we'll see. So this is the data, okay, which I'm interested to download, for example. So what other information I get is how many spots. What do you mean by spots? So I'm saying how many reads. Now you all know what are reads. So this many reads are there. One forty-eight point nine billion reads. Okay, this data set has. Now your task is to process this one forty-eight million reads and find out which gene is expressed how much level. Yeah. How do we do that actually? Think logically and tell me. Anyone want to try? Comparison. You have 148 million reads. Reads means short sequences. Now we need to put them up together and find out which gene is produced how much. So you have a reference genome. You all agree? Mm -hmm. Means you know where which gene is there, which position from where to where the gene is covering. Now you have the sequences. What we do is comparison. Compare, yes, exactly. So we take these sequences, go and compare with the reference. So we know that if uh, sample A, this gene, if you have matches the reads, ten reads, in the other sample you have matched only five reads. So what we say, this gene is more expressed in sample one or two? Two, 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 two five reads. Uh, one. Sample one is ten reads. Okay, one. One, right? So we are actually looking at the sequences. How many are matching to the gene? And this is proportionate to what we have in the sample, right? So in the sample, if there is a RNA which is produced at ten times more than the other one, you are supposed to sequence that more times, and that's why you are supposed to get that in more numbers. Of course, we name them RPKM, PPM, and all that. Okay, just giving a value. <coughs> okay, so this is how we filter the data.
clear? So if I give you a question, find out how many colon cancer data sets are there, okay? Uh, which is having the DNA content. You can find out? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes? Yes, ma'am. Are you confident? Yes, ma'am. Is that clear? 
Okay? So this is one example of SRA. Right? Everyone understood? Yes? yes. Or else I'll explain again. No, right? Now, everyone understood. So I cannot call anyone to answer these questions. Okay. So now our objective is something like we have lung cancer data set, how to identify. We have seen one example. Now, whom should I call? Who is ready first of all? Anyone want to volunteer without me calling? Yes? Please come. Now, uh, just do one example and show. Anyone. Okay, you are interested in diabetes or COVID-19, whichever you are interested. Yes, get the answer for this and this. Hmm. Question is clear, right? Yeah. Oh, what's your name? Now, Raghav is going to show how we find the answer for this. How many data sets are available, okay? I can call any one of you, at least now you see. How is it? He's deciding now which one to choose. <laughs> so anyone of you have any favorites for any disease? <laughs> for any other, okay? I meant. So once you're done, you can just tell what you found, okay, for what you found. Yeah. 
So now, ideally what we should do is, of course, anyone, if you give, uh, tell you to query, we will use different words. Because I said now in RAD, we usually query like that. But this is where your hands-on will help. Okay? So instead of putting the other terms, use the free terms. Any database, remember this. Okay? It's not only for this database, but any <coughs> biological uh, resource you are using, appropriate filter you do, then you will get the correct answer. Okay, you can um, choose the other one. So for that, he got around 327, based on what we saw in the thing, right? Thank you. Now, who wants to do the other one, other than that? Okay, if you're not coming, I'll call it. Yeah, you want to come? Try? Yeah. So you can uh, choose other than diabetes that you already done. Oh, 
Some of you remember the question clearly. So we need RNA reagents. Okay, so this one is RNA reagent. Okay, so we need 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 RNA
Okay. So if you want to sequence 3.3 billion, but you want to only study the exonic regions, is there a mutation in the exonic region? So your other bases are not relevant for you to study, right? So in that case, I can cut short the cost that is required for sequencing by choosing a specific library. We say that library preparation, okay? So there we choose, in, like I am studying RNA, which is much lesser than DNA, right? How much less are we talking about? So earlier we used to think RNA is only the useful coding region, which is of how much percentage? Very less percentage, right? And remaining all genome is junk. That's what that what uh, was before, right? Did it change now, or you're still there? No. Is that still same? Same? The remaining part is junk. No. no. Yes. No. 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 Then what is the right answer? It's not junk. So it is useful. In what way? We have other non-coding RNAs, first of all, which regulate or can regulate the coding RNAs. So how do you know in which cell what to be expressed? Right? What is the decision factor? You have transcription factors which play a role, which decides what to be expressed at which level, how much level, all that. But even to activate that region, you have other, or uh, activate the expression or repress the expression, you have other non-coding regions which are playing part. For example, the non-coding RNAs. Or the binding sites for these transcription factors. If there is a mutation in the binding site, okay, which means the factor can bind properly? No. It may not. Right? Which means that is not expressed. So it's playing a role of regulation. Right? So it's not only uh, the coding region. So we all know that remaining region also is useful, right? But when we say exome, we are referring to the genome, which are all the exonic regions, okay? So nothing, we are talking about how much it is expressed, okay? So in that context, can you refine your search, you think? It should be refined? Yeah, I thought of that, but the uh, server is not uh, thinking that you may not have phones. Yeah. So actually you all can use, SRA can be browsed through mobile also, but I'm only telling to browse SRA, not some other, okay? Because I'm going to ask the numbers. The next one I'll show you, and you're going to give the numbers, everyone, I'll ask anyone. Okay? Please tell me your mobile, national center for... Open, in the Google, just query NCBI SRA. Don't just put SRA, okay? You'll get a lot of other SRAs. Okay? NCBI SRA, you will get this home page. So, Divya, right? You want to refine? Now, after giving this much uh, talk on that, you, you don't say. You, you choose the right option. Exon is right. Anyone can suggest? Yeah, is there any refinement needed here? Is RNA? Is RNA. RNA. Is RNA. Very good. So, we don't need RNA. Right? Yes, so that's my limit of the data sets. We are looking at the DNA, <laughs> which are all those exonic regions. Right? Not at the sequences, which are expressed in the sample. It's only the DNA we are looking at. Now back to my question, why we talked about RNA, how much percentage? So if I am going to sequence, only the coding regions I want to study, I can only go with the exon. That will cut short my cost of sequencing itself. Because each base will be charged. Okay? In lakhs and lakhs, once you want a complete genome sequence, it will cost in lakhs. Okay? The sequencing. And you are going to get data like this 5 GB, 10 GB. And you don't know what to do with that. We have a lot of sequences. So there are programs which are set up. We will go into that program. It's not so easy, though we say like that, okay? And that will now analyze and retrieve which genes express how much. Okay, for that, how we perform the searches now, how we filter, okay, just by searching, we might get some answer. But we may be wrong, choosing some wrong data set, okay? 
Like that, similarly, in the analysis also, there are some set steps, which if you are aware of, you will do a better analysis and you get the better results, which, which is used for publication. Yes, now you define, right? So we have, um, yes. <coughs> Actually, you can first choose DNA, okay? Ideally, what she does is correct. Within DNA, there is a lot of data. Complete genome also, they can sequence. Now she is filtering among them how much. Ideally, what you should see, a higher number where? In the DNA. Because exome is part of the DNA, right? So this is something problem with the resource. So what uh, usually happens is, there are some fields which when author submits the data, they are mandated. Like suppose the DNA is a mandate field, uh, library layout is a mandate field, okay? Mandate means, suppose I did the sequencing, I am going to upload it to NCBA SRA. They will check everything and then only they will put it into public. So while I am uploading, I have a format to be filled, like how you are filling uh, to attend something, right? So in that format, there are some fields which are optional, some fields which are mandate, right? It's similar to the forms. So there, whatever is mandate, all the authors will fill because it is mandate. Whichever is optional, sometimes they don't uh, care much about or they don't understand the data. For whatever reason, they will be mis uh, marked like that. So that's what happened here. Strategy is marked, but it is not marked like a DNA. Those data sets are missing. But otherwise, this is the ideal case. You should go with the DNA and then fill it up using exome. Good idea. Okay. So I'm just going to put the questions. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now that you are using the mobile. Ma'am, can I take this? So you are talking about which A, B, C? I'm sick. Uh, that platform. Platform. Platform yeah. used. Uh, which A, B, or C? B. B. Okay. We already got the B answer, which is what is the platform? So what do they say? Ra Raghav, right? Raghav. Oh, yeah. Fifty one point three uh, runs, million runs. You said B, right? So first B, um, uh, platform used. Oh. Illumina Nova C. Uh, set Illumina six Nova C. Is that right? All of you got the same thing? Okay. So what's the next one you got? 51.3 million uh, spots for run. A. A. Number of runs. Okay. 51.3 million. 3 million. Is that right? Yes. Runs. Reads. Is that right? Yes. Raghav, you want to define? You said number of reads or number of runs? 
So hopefully you have multiple questions, but he'll anyway mention each of them. 150 read length, how many of you got? One. Okay, anyone else? Read length, 150. Anyone else? Okay, two there. Read length is 150. Number of runs it is one. You have to clear, okay, filters. Always, you also remember this, always. Whenever you do a fresh search, you have to clear the previous filters. Rather, there is something called clear all filters. You can do that. Oh, uh, yeah. Down, down, bottom, here. Yes. Okay. Now, this is the SRX ID, which is an experiment ID. So, where did you find the runs? Most of the information is there in the first line, if you see. Right? So, this is runs, one run. So, sometimes we need more runs. Okay? Means, in, initially, when NGS was there, those platforms were not able to generate so many million leads in one experiment. That was a limitation. So now we have the latest technology, which we can do in one run. So many leads we can generate. But earlier, we used to do multiple runs. Same sample, again sequence, again sequence. So that we get to a stage where we have enough depth. Okay? So in those cases, it will be multiple. So what he is showing right now is read length. Okay? You can see this run has two reads. So this is where it is a little complicated, single and paired end. So I have a fragment like this. I can sequence from both ends. What is the use of it? I sequence from this side and this side also. So there is something which is, which is common to both. So I have a higher coverage. Okay, if your fragment is of so in length, if you just sequence from one end, one end it stops here. This fragment is not covered. That's what's called paired end when you sequence from both ends of the fragment. Okay, is that clear? So it's trying to show you that it is a paired and sequencing data. And the current technology mostly uses paired end sequencing. Okay, which means two root reads you will get from one spot. And which means you have double, 50 million double times actually the reads. Okay. So read length is right there. You have the platform here, Illumina, and of course the specific one is Novo C. Yeah. What else you want to show in this? Which question? Yeah, so any other part of those questions you have a doubt? Steady ID. Anyone got that? So as I was explaining, if we manage to do a study, we just don't do it one experiment, right? You all agree? Yes, sir. We do multiple samples. So this is only one sample. But how many samples were considered in the study? Right? Anyone? Got that? So go back to the SRS page. Correct. That's the project ID. So when we submit the data, yeah, little up. Okay. So this is the experiment ID for one exponent. But this belongs to a study, which is SRP in the study. You see, transcript bones, right? Under that, there is SRP prefix. That is for the study. Now, next to it, all experiments. Now, can you click on all experiments next to the SRP? Yeah. So, this will tell you, in the whole study, how many experiments they have done. How many? 16. 16, okay? So, they have considered 16 samples. As you can see, the name itself suggests like PD1, PD1, all are PD1, but different cases. Okay? Clear? So now I have to download the whole study, then I have to download all the 16, or whichever sample is relevant to you, and then confirm. So where is the sample information? Any one if you click, one of the sample you go. You can click on one of the samples, any any case. You can click on one sample. <coughs> yeah. Okay, so can you find some information sample? They say sample, right? So if you click on this SAML, it's linked with that. 
that will give you more information on the sample that is taken. So sometimes when you're doing a study, you might want normal as well as cancer tissues, right? So in such case, you need to explore more, getting into de details. So is this lung cancer or not? It is the lung cancer or subtype, okay? And this CLC is a type of lung cancer, major type of lung cancer, okay? So it's called non-small cell lung cancer, okay? It's a form of lung cancer, okay? So now we know, okay, this is a lung cancer. And similarly, we need to fetch other sample information and decide which sample I want to download. Now once you have the data, what we need to do? We need to process the raw data and get those genes which are differentially expressed. For example, here, uh, this is very specific. But let's say it's only lung cancer. But these details are given more in depth for all the samples, like which uh, ethnic group the cancer sample belongs to. So it backs to the, uh, take me back to the previous question, like we don't have a clear cut answer for cancer. Right? One reason is the drugs, most of them are designed based on. American population, right? Most of the research studies are done there. So there might be differences in the ethnicity itself. But has someone done that? If not, we have a chance to do. We take the same data, we segregate them into different ethnic groups and find out which genes are differentially expressed with cancer versus not. Or only take the Indian population and do a study. How the existing biomarkers are different if you study only Indian patients, we can do a study, right? So this is what your background, uh, you can search whether there is a study or not. If not, yes, we have a chance to explore that. So we got all the answers, I think, right? But you have noted down, we can easily get for any other experiment that is given, okay? Are we clear? Yes, ma'am. So is it okay? Is it interesting? Okay. So now let's see you have all noted down, right? The same thing now replaced with another condition. Maybe COVID nineteen. Okay. People have done so many, uh, you know, uh, so much research is done on that in different aspects. Is uh, microbial population, you know, corresponds to anything with the many people has been affected, right? With the same virus, but not everyone got disease. So what could be the reason? So these kind of questions you can ask. Put some biological questions. Okay, and try finding answers to your own. SRA, of course, there has a limitation to analyze because of what? First, because of the data size. Okay, so first hurdle uh, we get is the size of the data. One of the samples we have seen how much GV it is? 16 GV. That is a compressed. So we call them as GZ format. Okay, like zip we say, right? Zip file. So in that format, it is very much compressed. It is uh, 16 GB, which is compressed. But what if we extract that? It will be 16 into 3 times. How much is that? 48. Okay, oh, good at math. <laughs> 48. Around 50 GB of space you need just for one sample. Now, how many experiments in that study they have done? 16, 48 into 16, that is the raw data size we are talking about. So we might need, first of all, to download and store the data. First of all, we need good internet speed, not like the one which I am using right now, right? So we need good internet speed. On that, we need space in the computer, not the laptop. So laptop, what is the general space? 500 GB. Right? Nowadays we are getting a little higher. Okay, 1 TB, 2 TB. And you can also expand it, that's all different. But your whole laptop, uh, in that 1 TB is only used for raw data itself. 
let's say you have downloaded, you have managed to download that. Okay? So 1 TB of raw data, now when you process it, how much is the size? First you need to do some quality checks and perform some filtering. Okay? So which will be again that much size? Your filter data is also equal to 1 TB. So 2 TB data. After you do that, you perform alignment. Right? You have the reach, you align the reference to know what genes are there in the sample. Once you align, it is again same size for each sample. Now again into three times. 3 TB data. Right? Now this 3 TB data will now come down to some level after that step, after alignment. Because it's only in some Excel sheets we are talking about where genes are there and you have corresponding values, how much it is expressed. Okay? So you can imagine just 16 or 20 samples and how many samples enough? 16 is enough. How many are enough? How many replicates are enough to conclude uh, you know, good experimental uh, data? Thousand. So let's say our initial question, lung cancer, uh, we want to find something. How many samples we need? Okay, so for performing the statistical analysis itself, we need three. Three in case of each cancer and normal, so total six. To do a good reasonable comparison, we need a minimum of six. Okay, six plus six, twelve. If you really want a paper in a high-end journal, you need more. That more has no end. Okay? How much more, the better it is. So, but minimum six, at least you want to target a good back factor journal. Okay? So, you can think of how much does it cost, first of all, and then what is the analysis, computational capacities that we have to analyze that. So, we are talking all this because how much we will be able to analyze NGS data. Okay, so for that we need just not knowing how to extract but also to analyze and also you have a supporting computer. And what is the RAM? We have 4 GB RAM. Let's say we have data for one sample which is of 4 GB. We are aligning against human genome which is of 3, 4 GB. Okay, the file size I am talking about. And when we align in, how much time does it take? Can you imagine? I am aligning these 50 million genes against human genome to get alignment file. What is the size? Uh, what is the time? Expected time? Hmm? Time, not the size. <laughs> how much time do you, what do you guess? Hours. How many hours? <laughs> Mama, whole day. Okay. Now I know everyone is laughing for the joke. Okay? Right? How much time? Any guess? Hours I can hear somebody says how many hours. But how many hours? Huh? How many? Twelve hours. Twelve hours for one sample of 5 GB data. Right? Twelve hours. More than twelve hours. More than twelve hours. Six hours. So it's actually, uh, I think, I don't know how she guessed, but that is close to the truth. 12 hours, but you should ask me back the question, what is the RAM of the computer? 16 GB. so much on that. 16 GB. So the laptop, right now what I'm using is 4 GB. Okay? Since I like that laptop, uh, bought it long back, my dad presented, I'm using it. For that purpose, I did update it. Okay? See the color was that closely. <laughs> right? So, but otherwise I should be using. But I don't process in this, of course. I only use for presentation and my work from home thing. Okay? So I should be using the office computer, which is how much RAM? 16 GB. 16 GB, no. 250 GB. Okay? 250 GB RAM computer, if I process this uh, 50 million reads, for example with the human reference, it takes about one and a half hour. Okay? Okay? So, this is the time you expect to do the alignment. So, with the 16 GB RAM, first of all, I'm not sure it will run. Okay? So, it will run. 
but it may crash. Your system. Because it's occupying a lot of memory and the computer is not supporting that, so it won't run. It may crash. But if you take a small data set, small genome size, yes, it will run. That's what we do usually in the training. We will give you hands on with the real data set, but of small size. Instead of taking whole genome, we will take only one chromosome. We will align the reads with that. So if the procedure is same, only the files are different. Okay? So like this, doing the real hands-on or even to think of NGS analysis for exploring the same objective is quite difficult because of these limitations. Okay? But the same thing can also be achieved using something other data called Anybody remember the other type of data which I talked about? Microarray. Microarrays. And uh, again, you can go to NCBI. GEO. Okay? So this is a gene expression omnibus. Okay? So this is again a repository which holds the microarray data as well as sequencing data also. But the raw data will be again linked to the SRI for sequencing. Otherwise, initially it was established to hold the microarray data. So how microarray is different from NGS? Anyone want to answer this? Microarray technology, of course you don't know inside, right? Microarray? So both are high throughput technologies. In microarray what happens, we have a something called array micro array. It's a small array. Array means a lot of probes will be there on that array. Okay, probes means small nucleotides. Okay, uh, means small size uh, length nucleotides. So maybe uh, 12 base pairs, like that. Okay, so these probes are designed to match to your genome. Based on what genome is the reference genome, they will design these probes and they will attach to the array, okay? Are we clear? Yes, ma'am. So these probes are there, some thousands of probes will be there on a small array. You all did microbiology experiments, right? Mm -hmm. Some There's a glass side, looks like, yes. to do gram positive negative. Yes. Uh, same type of slide will be there for microarray. So you can imagine, there are 30,000 probes. Okay, type of probes. So 30,000 slots will be there in that small glass like where you load the sample. What sample? Whatever you want to detect, uh, differential express genes, whatever sample you want to analyze, RNA sample, you will load onto that chip. We call it as uh, not potato chip, microarray chip. Okay? So onto the chip, where the probes are already there. Right? Now when you add your sample, what happens? RNA is there in the sample? What happens? The probe it goes and binds to probe when there is a complement. Now ATGC is there, I have the sample also ATGC goes and binds there. Your sample is now linked with the probe. Okay? This is the experimental part. I'm just reading the logic behind it. Now when we have that, what we do is these probes are there, your sample is attached. But this sample is coded with a fluorescent label. So, which means if you pass through a beam, laser beam of a particular wavelength, it will detect the color. signal, Fluous. color. Okay? So, that's why whenever we see microarray, it's color. Each colors you can see, different colors. So, based on the intensity of the color, you decide how much it is produced, how much molecule is there in the sample, how much RNA is there in the sample. More towards the red color, you have coded the red to the uh, this is sample. More expressed in this. More towards the green color, it is more expressed in normal. So we finally identify, analyze, and identify those genes. This is microarray. But NGS, now you know a bit of NGS also. Now you tell me what is more advantageous? Microarray or NGS? Microarray. Why? How many say microarray first of all? Okay, around 5-6 people microarray. How many say NGS sequencing? I can see one person. 
Rest others, not sure. Or don't want to say anything, right? Okay. Those I'm going to ask more questions. Okay. So, what is more advantageous is NGS for sure. And why? So that's why I explain the microarray. NGS. What we do? We take the sample, extract the RNA. We are sequencing everything. Right? In microarray, what is bound only we are finding. Okay. Now what will be bound? First of all, it should be there in the sample and probes. Probes, probes should be there. And probes are designed based on known sequence. Known information, which is reference. Right? So you can reuse it and update based on the reference. That is always there. But if there is a normal splice form or isoform or a transcript which is expressed only in this disease. Yes. How will you detect that? You can't. you can't. Because we don't know yet. But in the RNA sequencing, yes. Because everything we are sequencing. We just have to match with the reference. Today the reference is HG38 we call that. Or HG19. We are using that. But it is updated recently. So my information may change when you again go and align. I can reuse it like that using the Sequencing data, but not in the microarray. Because it is already bound and generated with it. Right? So that's the advantage. Like you can identify anything novel uh, found in the sample using the NGS technology, but not with microarray. So when I say microarray in that context, of course, we have a limitation of the size in terms of NGS, next generation sequencing technology. But that is not there in case of microarray. Initially, when NGS is not there, and, uh, microarray is to be the hero. Okay? So they reached it, oh my god, lot of data. But what is the size, you know? MBs. 1 MB, 2 MB, per sample. That much only we used to think, lot of data, how will we analyze here? But after NGS came into picture, this is nothing. For all 16 samples, I just had 20 MB of data to download and analyze. So, to make a hypothesis, yes, this is good enough to go ahead. Okay? So, to make predictions, now I can use the same data. First start with, okay, is there a difference between the lung cancer? Uh, different stages. How many of you smoke? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I can use uh, 10% Okay, I'm telling you, I'm giving the real uh, experience. 
So let's say, I'll take one example uh, of lung cancer. Okay, so here don't get confused. The first number is the beta cells, mostly. Okay, this one is the number of genes. How many profiles are available, which is related to lung cancer? We are going with the data set because we want to download some data set and process them. So right now we can do that. We can process and get this sample only. Okay, what are those different places? So you can take any area of your interest and perform. Okay, but before that you need to understand this. Okay, are we clear? So when we search something, again we are going to get some hits and we know these are not right, I mean not the right ones that we want. So we are going to choose the filters. So I am choosing Homo sapiens. Something similar to uh, SRX is what this number is. Okay, each microarray data set is available like this. But now that is divided into different data sets, series, samples and platforms. So this will tell me how many data sets are there, how many samples. Data sets means here studies, like SRP. One SRP has how many in the previous example? 16. So here one study may have some 20 samples. So these are the number of data sets that we have. Okay, 46,000 or number lung cancer microarray data sets are there. So now it has a lot of other types of data. We can choose based on what is your type of data. Okay, so these filters, I think now you are good to go. You can understand, apply according to the filters and choose what is right. I will only tell how do we actually process the right layer. Okay, so I will show you other examples. So this all I will give you as an assignment, you can explore. Now let's take this one. So here, try and understand our objective. Right now you are also going to do with me, okay? So we will find the, what are the top five differentially expressed genes between smoker and non-smoker of the lung cancer patients, okay? What are those genes? We will find out. So this is the ID that we already have. It's called a series ID. So I'm going to put that here. So ideally what happens, we have the microarray raw data, similarly what we have in NGS. In microarray also we have raw data and uh, how do you process that? So how we have each sequence, that is the raw data for sequencing. In microarray what is the raw data? Each probe, you have 30,000 probes. Each probe, there will be some corresponding gene for that probe. Which gene is that and what is the level of expression? So initially you will have an image, a scanned image, which gives only colors. But once you process the image, there are image processing software and that will convert the color intensity and give the number. How much intensity this particular spot is having, probe is having. Now I know that probe corresponds to gene 1. Now based on that I am going to decide, gene 1 is expressed this much, okay? So this is the study which we queried. Now first, I will just show you the overview of the study. So this is, they also have done smokers versus non-smokers, okay? And it's published in Cancer Research 2006. And this is the data. So how many samples are there? Anyone? Nine. Nine. Very good. Now you are easily catching the data information, right? So how many GSMs? That many number of samples. Okay, right there you can see samples. Samples are there. That's why you should be having telling, right? I thought so. Really, you are doing that. Okay, anyways. So, here we have 9 sample and this belongs to which study? 
This is the study with ID 5059. Okay? So this is the overall comparison that they have already done by this research group and they are still updating the data. Okay, this is about the lab where the data is generated and these are the samples. Now how many replicates I have for smokers? Four. Five. Four. Five. 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 How many I have for non smokers? Four. 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 Right? So now I am going to use this data and perform differential expression. Right? So for, to do that, what do we need first of all? Ideally what happens, we download it. Okay? And we have uh, softwares for each of the steps. We normalize first. There is some background intensity always seen. They go and randomly bind sometimes. Not specific binding will be there. Are they will be just hanging around on the chip. That is also detected. How do you remove those uh, non-biased ones and take uh, only the non-biased Remove those biases. So there is something called as normalization required. Okay, so we keep, normalization means we keep the information no matter whatever bias is there into the same scale. Okay, so which means I loaded the sample into one, uh, one of the sample, but someone else did for the other sample. They loaded more. Because of that, are you detecting more expression? Right? Or it is because really they are expressed more. So we will clear these things in the step called normalization. We will normalization and find out after differential expression analysis, again some more analysis using the software, we will identify what is significantly differentially expressed between two groups. Okay? So that's what we are ideally supposed to do when we have the raw data. But right now, it is there here. You think we are going to download? Don't worry, okay? Don't get scared. We are not downloading, we are not analyzing it here. We are using something called GEO to R. So I think it is better than connect things. So someone else want to explore this? Want to try a new thing? You can come. You. you. <laughs> so I will explain the process, okay? <laughs> Now, Tanushri is going to get those, Tanusha is going to get those five differentially expressed genes between smoker and non-smoker right now, okay?
So, the objective of the main study could be something else. What is their goal is just to find what are those differential genes between normal and normal and what is the goal there? Normal smokers versus non-smokers. So they are trying to see the effect of smoking on on what? With the cancer, association with the cancer. Right? But the same data can be used to find out something else. Okay, like we have seen so many case studies you people giving, right? The same thing we can do. Now, what we need to do is, we need to choose which sample belongs to what group. So you are creating the group. Now, Tanusha, just select the sample. I'll just show you. We need to define the groups. So what uh, study you want to do now? Uh, we had something in the example, smoker versus non-smoker, right? So let me make a group. Okay, this is what you need to do. Okay, it's fine. Anything. So I have smoker. Now which are those smoker samples? I have these. So I keep selecting them. And then mark them into smoker. Right now what happened? I have marked the group, the first column, now you see, it's marked which sample belong to what group, right? Now, I mark the same thing for the, okay, I'm giving whatever is coming, okay, so is it marked? So please do the same thing, I have now marked the purple ones are non-smoker. And the green ones are smokers. Now what do I need to do? Simply, now Tanusha will get. Click on the analyze. So now clicking on the analyze will give you those genes which are differentially expressed between non-smoker and smoker. Right now it is processing, right? <coughs> so anyone has got the answer? The list loaded? Yeah, right there we have. Okay. So looking at all the details will take more time. We will stick to our goal which is finding out those genes which are Top. So when I say top, what do you understand? What is top means? Most important. Right? Top. So based on what top? Based on the difference. Based on the significance. Right? Difference means we are saying differentially expressed. So suppose I have in the normal just one RNA, I have 100 RNA in the cancer. So is that significant or not? I will do a statistical analysis. And what we get after that? P-values. Okay? So based on which we are going to decide whether what you observe is not by random chance, it is really there in the sample. Right? This is what statistics. Clear? So P-value, how much is good? The more it is better or less it is better? So, let me again tell, p-value means something by random chance. Suppose if I pick some genes, they are going to be different, randomly also. Right? Let's say for example, if I pick someone, what is the chance I get the person wearing a red shirt? There will be some random chance. Got it? So instead of people, now we here we have genes. Okay? So instead of color, we have differential expression. So to rule out that randomness, we are performing the t-test. Okay? I think the statistics is part of your subjects, I guess. No? Not yet? Okay. So in simple terms, you are ruling out what is given by random chance. That is what is p-value. Okay? Now tell me, p-value should be less or more? More. More? 
Um, higher probability will be higher like probability of getting random chance. Mm. No, ma'am. Mm. Ma'am, if p value is higher, the chances of getting a gene will be higher in the group. No, p is value random. is higher. P value indicates you get this by random chance. Okay, then it should be less. It should be less, yes. right? So the less the p value, the more significant it is. So when I need to say top, means least p value. By default, your results will be sorted based on the least p value. Okay, which is here third column. Second is also p value. Nowadays, people don't consider just the p value. Again, they do a correction on that. They call it adjusted p value or FDR. And we go with that value. Okay? So, right now it is sorted. So, now we know uh, which genes. Can you tell Tanisha? Which genes are the top uh, differentially expressed genes? Anyone? Anyone? Which gene? What is the gene? It's right there. Okay? So ADGRL3 is the second one. The third one, ADHCA1. Okay? So they are basically. So what we have in microarrays probes. So these are the probes. Okay? They are targeting those genes. You can scroll a little bit down. So all of you got these differentially expressed genes? In your mobile also, I guess, I know it will come. Mm, table is not coming. Table is not loaded. Okay, you have to click again. Sometimes it will load. It depends on the compatibility again, the browser and this thing, okay? Anyways, so this is the table that you get. You can also download this list, okay? So in simple ways, what we have done today is we processed the existing microarray data and we obtained the genes that are individually expressed between two groups. We have grouped them and you can do. Okay? Right? So I'm not getting into other details. But otherwise, the least the p-value, the significant it is. So these are the genes which are significantly different in a smoker versus non-smoker. And we have the Fold change. How many fold different? This gene is different, but it's ten fold, two fold, three fold. That's what is given in this column. Okay. The important things: this one, this one, this one, of course, and this one. Okay, which tells about the data. Thank you. Is that clear? Now you all can do with using the same data set: male versus female and note down how many genes you got, okay, and which are the top genes. Clear? Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you now to do. We also published a research article. I'll show you that now. Just a uh, just of show. is about only the analysis of using the existing available data. Okay? So if we can do, you can do. It all depends on what hypothesis you start with. Okay? Some background knowledge. You need to search what has been already studied. What is left? What is important within that? Frame a hypothesis and then come up with the solution using the existing data. Clear? 
Okay, so with that um, thing, I want to conclude here. And I want to take if you have any questions. They're all tired, looks like. Well, I thank everyone for being so patient in so much time. Okay? I thank you for that. And I thank all the members who have organized this and gave me this opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, who has cooperated with me. Okay, thank you all again. And I hope you will practice those hands on. Okay? Then only you remember. You can do interesting studies and find out answers for yourself on COVID-19 also. Okay, thank you.